Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in Linux and open source. That was Jill Bryant. Hello, Jill Bryant. How are you doing? I do not see a cat sleeping on your head. That is brilliant. Lovely. No. (laughs) Our our kitty wouldn't be allowed to do that. (laughs) (sighs) That cat is going to sleep on your head tonight. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I don't know. We were just talking about that in the pre-show. Go back and listen to that if you yeah. are a patron. Uh, I'm Vin. You're at LGC Actual. We're doing the thing. This is where we sit down. We talk about fun stuff. You might have guessed we try to have a fun time. If you're allergic to humor, laughter, and you know people not being super <laughs> serial, you might want to run. There's your warning. But jo- <laughs> you joined us for, we keep talking about Trekmania. Why do we keep talking about Trekmania? Because it's silly. It's, it's so cheap. Fun. It's fun. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it's easy. It's an erasing arcade game that anyone can can sit down and play and learn. <laughs> and it's kind of weird like that, because even if you're not into um, driving games, it's a physics puzzle. That Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does something in your little reptile mind that it's clearly into physics. And you're like, how do I do this? How do I work my way through this? And it's super, super accessible. And we had a good time right around tracks on Tuesday. Everyone gets together and... Uh, we just pick out the tracks that we're going to race on Friday. We get our own little private server, which wasn't private last night because some moron forget to put a password on it when he uh, reset <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we had a, had a lot of uh, uh, randos we don't <laughs> we had usually a have. And it happened. I predicted it because I think it was, uh, might have been uh, Ogie that gave me, like, I didn't have to type in a password. I'm like, oh no. Okay, let's see who's going to be the first person because, you know, the game. What you're yeah. going to get the the name of the server is Filthy Casuals. Like, hey, we're just we're having fun, we're playing around. I'm like, I guarantee you, just wait. You're going to get some tryhards to come in and just do some victory yeah, beat laps. Us all. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. didn't immediately happen, but before we had two that were you know like five or six seconds. I'm like, good on you. I bet you go to the elementary school and outrun the kids when they're doing laps. Understood. But what else have you been up to, man? Uh, you went to Disneyland last Thursday, right? Oh, yeah. It was so much fun. We we went oh. there to celebrate uh, Did you Stephen's get Steve birthday. two badges? Did you get one for the front yes. and the back? <laughs> just, just the one. Uh-huh. So he enjoyed, you know, really enjoyed his birthday badge, or, or I called it the button of shame as a joke. But no, it, it was really, <laughs> really wonderful. All the cast members are trained to see birthday buttons and anniversary buttons. And if you're a magic key holder, like we are, um, an annual pass holder. So, but what was cool is he got sung to by the cast members on, uh, oh, uh, Star Tours. I was trying to think of the name of the ride, the the Star Wars ride, Star Tours, and that was really awesome. What did they <laughs> sing? Like um, that? Like Don't Fear the Reaper. Happy or? birthday! Oh no, Happy birthday! And so, but every, every, all the cast members and people were wishing him Happy birthday, and that was really really nice. <laughs> I uh... it's a treat him is special because he's my special husband and he deserves it. <laughs> Did you get a few tennis balls for his walker? Uh, no. <laughs> He's Steve not that old yet. Old tennis balls. That's a shame. Uh, another thing I was talking about, which uh, this, this has happened if you watch the show for any amount of time. If I order something, it's going to arrive on Wednesday around 3 p.m. My yeah. It doesn't matter if I get it next day. If I order it from AliExpress, it's somehow just going to show up at 3 p.m. Strangely enough, the one thing I was like, yep, that's probably going to be here at 3 p.m. And it's like, no, it'll be tomorrow. So who knows? But a pair of headphones that are so ugly that I'm scared to wear them, Jill. Mm, but oh, boy. I might not even wear them on air because I got my Sony MDR7506s. These are classics. They get the job done. Been yeah. made for 30 years. But these are an, kind of a critically acclaimed set of mixing cans. They're a little more expensive, but I found a refurbed. I've been looking for these for about two years and always with the debate of like, do I want to be seen online with that on my head? Because <laughs> it, you might even like them, but I'm sure one cup you could wear as a hat because they're also massive. Oh. They're big. Oh, are they're they a pre- uh, are they a pretty color or just huge? Or? Nope. You know what? <laughs> In their defense, the initial ones I completely wrote off because I'm like, I just can't do that. And I'm not a person 
listen, I, I mean, I, I not somebody I am anti-fashion with stuff. I wear weird stuff out and about, but some things are just, it's pushing it too far, but they made a slightly less fugly mm-hmm. color combination, but only okay. slightly, only just enough to where I'm going, you know what? <laughs> That's like 40% off. It was a factory refurbished unit. Of, and I'm like, ah, fine. We'll just get them because I won't be too upset with them. Um, regardless, but Friday, we'll be back in track mania. If you want to hop in, you can do that if you're a Twitch sub or if you're a patron, hop in our Discord. There's a Trackmania channel with the password for the server to practice on until Friday. We do that. We're handing out free games. Top three spots. You don't have to be first. In fact, coming in sixth or seventh can win the game for you. It's all about consistency if mm-hmm. you want to play along with that. But speaking of games, I know this is not the gaming show, but Back for Blood just enabled yesterday. Nice. It's EAC support. <laughs> On Linux and yay, yay, because we got to play with that for a minute before they cut the EAC switch on. There's videos of us doing it in the after shows, and we've been looking, yeah. you know, big fans of Left 4 Dead. And this is a spiritual successor to Back for No Left 4 Dead. This is not Left 4 Dead mm-hmm. 2, it's effectively or 3, yeah. whatever this would be. <laughs> and um, I think if everything works out, I don't want to make plans to do it because if we make plans to do it, something will happen like meteors. But um, maybe the headphones will arrive and I'll be lost in the awesomeness. Maybe a little too fugly, I'll implode. Uh, <laughs> Jordan and myself, probably tomorrow night, we'll be doing um, some initial testing with that. And hopefully they'll go better right. than Fall Guys that Jordan tried to Oh, play. yeah. I felt bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. But he tried. And it was like three or four minutes and it would crash and come back up. Fall Guys is another interesting thing. This is all stuff that we like to play in the after shows and on Saturday when we get done with Linux Gamecast Weekly. So mm-hmm. maybe you can hop in and join us for that. We all love Absolutely. snaps, Jill. I've never heard a yeah. bad word said about snap packages. or like, this is the most awesome technology <laughs> in the world. It is going to revolutionize <laughs> packaging on Linux. And there's, it's infallible. Uh, it does this. It even <laughs> gives you like bonus things. Um, well, Pedro isn't on the show today, so. <laughs> We're still going to talk about it. Not regular snaps, but unsnaps. A way to quickly migrate from using snap packages to flatbacks? Yeah, flatbacks. Yeah. <laughs> no, get... I know Pedro would approve of that. <laughs> I think this gets a little more interesting when you look at the author. It's Popey. A uh, former yes. canonical employee, but he set this up, man, and this is what it says to do on the tin. Quickly and easy migrate using Snap for applications to Flatpak. Unsnap runs as a two-stage process. Unsnap itself generates scripts to do the actual migration. This enables users to view and or edit the scripts prior to execution to validate or tweak them. Simple enough to run, you know, clone the git, boom, hit it. And it does the scripts, package mapping, uh, there's a check mode, application data, logging, there's excluded snaps, a bunch to read on. All this is going to be in the show notes. I just want to give you a um, quick overview of it. But mm-hmm. when I first read this before I really read into it too, uh, I was like, because I, I want an application to convert uh, a snap into just like a general tar.gz package that I can dump into one directory and run. I'm looking at you. Um, what is it? Authy. Is it Authy? Chrome apps? Yeah. Yes, Authy. Authy that has a snap. Mm-hmm. That That is their Linux desktop version. Like, <laughs> do you have anything that's other than snap? Nope. Uh, but this is still neat because I think Flatpaks, everyone's just kind of agreed like, hey, we're going to do the Flatpak thing. Even OBS. We yeah. talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Um, do you have snap installed? I, uh, To be honest, I was not going to install snap mm. to try this out. Oh, yeah. So I haven't used this yet, but I do have snaps installed on one of my machines that I use to test snaps for for reviewing on the sh- on our show. So I definitely do have that, but I haven't installed on Snap yet because I was kind of waiting till it wasn't experimental. And it, and it still is very experimental right now, but that doesn't usually stop me from trying. <laughs> but so I, I will eventually try it on my machine. But what I've heard from the community is that it works pretty well. Alan makes a point, you know, 
to say experimental. Mm-hmm. This is use at your own risk, but go try yeah. it. Bang <laughs> on it. And, you know, reporting <laughs> bugs you run into. But yeah, I don't, I wouldn't be a good use case. I would have to install snaps and find something from snap to install. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, does it work yeah. into a flat pack? I, hmm. I don't know. Interesting piece of kit. Interesting piece of kit, but not as interesting as how angry people are going to be for no good reason. Oh, yeah. Because Fedora <laughs> is going to kill your legacy BIOS. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Your vintage 2007 PCs will have to run on something else. Right. Mm-hmm. And think about it because we're talking about like Athlon 64 and like core two duo systems that you absolutely positively need the latest and greatest version. You don't, you don't, um, but don't worry about it because you know, this is kind of a little hybrid mode and like, Hey, this is coming down the pipeline, but they do plan to eventually completely remove legacy bio support entirely. And we were talking about this. I mean, it's fedora mm-hmm. uh, and this is, yeah, it's fedora. Yeah. It, bef- before arch B a, uh, mm-hmm. this was the absolute like bleeding edge, you know, brace yourself, get good at Linux scrub distribution. Now it's kind of tame and that's not a bad thing because I would absolutely recommend installing fedora for a desktop for somebody. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, smooth. absolutely. But, um, you know, UEFI, uh, Yuffies, they've been around forever now, and you, you would have to yeah, hunt we were talking to about find that something, earlier. right? Yeah. Hey, what do you think the uh, oldest thing that you have with UEFI is? Early 2000s? Because mm-hmm. I know a lot, of, a lot of, we were talking about the a lot of the Dell machines, they were the first to implement UEFI, UEFI but you could always switch easily to, to legacy, which you can on, on today's modern computers and motherboards. Right. Because we went through that for a long time, you know, it would have like legacy yeah. BIOS mode because, hey, let's bring that back to uh, Canonical and Ubuntu. When I got my, uh, yeah. I think it was a quad core AMD, it just had uh, UEFI. It didn't have a legacy fallback mode on that motherboard that I bought. That was the only distribution at the time that could get up and running on it. So things have kind of changed a little bit, but we're talking again, these uh, old Dell 3010s, they even have. Yuffie with the mm-hmm. legacy bio switch, which yeah. I was popping into the show because Joel's like, you can make them scream at people without plugging in speakers. I was like, oh, do tell. And yeah, so yeah. I, I you, was, ben had never played with that. That was so cool. <laughs> so anybody that is terrorized from now on, our fault. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Mir and Chat made the point. Yes. UEFI was uh, first implemented. Apple was the first to put it on their machines. Mm. But Dell was kind of the first after that. And then HP kind of fell sweet uh, to include that technology. And I I really like my UEFI BIOS, but uh, on my old machines, I, I have legacy. So yeah, Fedora won't work on those old machines. That's what Debian is for. <laughs> so. I kind of want to tell all you kids to, with your UFIs, get off my lawn with my OBP. Yeah. <laughs> my open boot and, prom. You know, yeah. So, you know, this actually really makes sense because Fedora has been, you know, really focusing on more modern hardware and, you know, progressive features um, like up and coming Wayland. Uh, they have that option and Pipewire. And uh, ButterFS, and yeah, they they really kind of spearheaded um, making that very stable in a distro. I want to throw a real thing uh, up. I want to uh, throw something out, Joel. I just thought of. <laughs> okay. Everybody in the audience, <laughs> have you ever tried to use your nice and gooey Yuffie BIOS without a mouse? Oh, I know. That's it. Can be a pain. It, it depends on. Yeah, my at the Azrock one I used, I could do pretty well with my keyboard, but <laughs> uh, other like MSI and you're, you're decrypting no matter harder. which one you're doing. You're like, what can this tab? Yeah, What's that move that. Uh, okay, fine. Let's go find the manual. And, really, it boils down like I'm just going to go find a mouse yeah. and plug it in. So I yeah, can. and you have a really good point, then, because that that's one thing about UEFI that does irritate me. As I shouldn't have to have a, a mouse to use it. <laughs> maybe maybe we can talk uh, manufacturers into ab- enabling like an American Megatrends vintage mode, where it just goes yeah, blue with the yes. yeah, that everyone is used to. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just an idea. You can charge extra for it. They'll pay for it. But say it's got RB- yeah. RBGs, RBGs, RGBs. Uh, what else does Fedora have for us, though? Oh, wow. Well, something other huge down the pipeline is um, when Fedora 37 comes out, prob- probably next year, Fedora will be removing the legacy XORG driver as well and will be Wayland only. That- that's kind of huge. <laughs> they're they're making a lot of changes in Fedora 37, you know, deprecating legacy BIOS and and uh, Wayland only. <laughs> so mm. this is going to be really cool to watch this. But knowing the Fedora developers, they're going to do a beautiful job of it, as they did with uh, previous versions of Fedora, and make all the things work. So <laughs> that's that's really nice. Do you hear that, Nvidia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, apparently in in uh, Fedora uh, 36, uh, they did a really good job um, because NVIDIA updated their drivers, and now mm-hmm. apparently it's working a lot better in Fedora. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to. I've been lo- I've been looking forward to using Wayland for over a decade, and now that it's kind of starting to get there, I'm not looking forward to it at all. But that's just because I'm a comrade and I don't like I don't like fixing things that are not broke. In my particular case, but for the end user, yeah, desktop yeah. users, it's going to be a brilliant thing because Wayland is our future. And yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Fedora's got to do it. Fedora's got the user base and they can drop it out there. And Absolutely. Like really yeah. give it the trial by fire and get the feedback from the users. Mm-hmm. So I want to applaud them on that. Now, yes. <laughs> I thought I was hot because I was running a kernel 517 RC, whatever, with my real time patches. But no, 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 you can't. You can't rest on your laurels, Linux kernels. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. <laughs> so Linux kernel 5.18 release candidate one has been released with new features from AMD and Intel and new system on chip support. And this is actually a big release, despite what Linus says. He always <laughs> says every Linux kernel release is not that big. But <laughs> Tis but a patch. This one is. <laughs> yeah. So um, it will, what's really cool in uh, Linux kernel 5.18, it will have support for Tesla's full scale driving SOC in the mainline kernel. Woohoo! And this work is done mainly by Samsung and, and other manufacturers. But that's a big deal because we have, you know, uh, SpaceX and Tesla and Elon Musk uh, going Linux. He has been for ages. That's what they use at SpaceX <laughs> for, for their rockets <laughs> and um, all the things. Aerospace uses NASA, uses uh, Linux. <laughs> so <laughs> Didn't they throw some Tegra stuff in this? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, NVIDIA Tegra video decode driver now has support. And we've got, been kind of waiting for that. I know Ven has been really excited about that. Well, the tech on the mobile really cool. side, yeah, that's going to be kind of fun to play around with. Um, seen some yeah. of that stuff. AMD GPU FreeSync. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Yeah, AMD GPU FreeSync video mode is now enabled by default. Woohoo! So that's really cool. Kind of thinking about and that. I was having that discussion yeah. last night with you know that new AMD laptop video card that they put on a PCI uh, <laughs> PCB. That they just what is it the oh. fifty two hundred or something like that? The one nobody yeah, liked yeah, it yeah, had yeah. four gigabytes. It's the better than nothing card. I was thinking about buying one of those, and uh, and I was thinking about FreeSync. I'm like maybe I can get a FreeSync monitor, which we both have FreeSync mon- monitors. They, I've just never used the FreeSync. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I've never used the FreeSync on the forty three inch, but I do use it. I have a a big uh, a curved monitor uh, behind me, a thirty four inch curved, and I've been using FreeSync on that. Ah. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> that be something to play with. Having but, yeah. that on would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just nice that it's enabled by will be enabled by default, and um, the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W is now supported in the mainline Linux kernel. Believe it or not, that didn't have full support yet. <laughs> so, believe it or not, that. reading that in the show notes reminded me that I bought one and I haven't done anything with it. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. And then also another cool thing is Intel's Alder Lake uh, N SOCs uh, land in this uh, kernel, and it will provide graphic support for the upcoming low-powered and low-end devices such as uh, Chromebooks. So mm-hmm. it's it's always a great thing to make them more efficient in Linux. 
So that'll be cool. How does that affect the battery life <laughs> on my Steam Deck? It doesn't. Uh, uh, doesn't, no. No, but this version does include the 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 finalization of of the audio chipset for the Steam Deck. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. You know, people, you yeah. know, th- those uh, crazy hackers will be able to install their hacker os windows 11 and maybe they'll get some sound with it but hey man that's the problem yeah, with windows maybe. sound never works um yeah <laughs> somebody's gonna get angry so with yeah that. this is a big linux kernel release it really is a lot of exciting things coming down the pipeline <laughs> i'm gonna stick with my old antiquated 517 rc whatever it was when i yeah <laughs> Well, you just it, upgraded to that, so that makes sense. <laughs> I try to limit myself to one kernel build a month, maybe two, if yeah. something interesting <laughs> is in it. But that's good news. Good to see. Now, something I've said on this show ad nauseum is, mm-hmm. and it's something that I want to say to any hardware manufacturer, is the quickest, most absolute, 100% guaranteed way to have your product reverse engineered to not release Linux drivers. I've seen this time and time and time again because that then it becomes a challenge, then it becomes a weekend project, and it will be thoroughly documented. Back in my rack, Motu, Mark of the Unicorn, mm-hmm. they make audio interfaces, and Linux is dumb. You know, they told Paul, uh, the, one of the creators of uh, Adore, like, ah, oh, you're a bunch of stinky hippies. We're not going to mess with Linux. And then the Fado project started up and they just reverse engineered their entire stack to Mm. this day. That hurts their sales because, Mm. you know, they quit making the windows drivers. They quit making the Mac drivers. It's like, Oh no, you got to buy our new stuff. No. Aw, Linux, we get open source. It's been done. (laughs) So we just keep running it. We plug it into a brand new system and just keep on going. Now, I wanted to bring up the sound because Sound Blaster, who remembers having the AW32 or the AW64? Oh, absolutely. I still have them in a lot of my machines in my collection. <laughs> the um, We love those cards. Probably, I think, maybe the first two or three years I was doing Linux Gamecast, it was being recorded on an AW64. PCI. Yeah, sound that's card. right. Yeah. That was a, one of our jokes. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how we get that smooth PCI bus sound. Um, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I never had anything against Sound Blaster, but I've never went out of the way to like buy sound cards. By the time I was really like looking into buying, you know, the last internal sound card I bought was an RME that worked. I'm not talking about the Digigram stuff, but now everybody just buys an external USB DAC, which makes sense because yeah. unless you get a really good reason, mm-hmm. you don't want to put anything inside. This is not an internal card, but this is the Sound Blaster X7. And it turns mm-hmm. out. That uh, didn't work with Linux. Less shock, right? Le gasp. But yeah, it did work over Bluetooth. There was an Android app that was able to control it. And be honest, if I bought something like that and I found out later, I'm like, oh, I can kind of, I, that's where I would have ended my journey. Now this dude, he looked at it and he's like, hey, how do we start capturing Bluetooth traffic? I'm like, this, this is, this is, I love this because this is example 3,172 of again, what happens when you don't release Linux drivers. And he mm-hmm. starts off with this. Says, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, how to do this. I love that approach because it's a great excuse to learn something new, but yeah, he kind of goes into it. Um, he used the uh, Bluetooth HCI Snoop log, captured the Bluetooth traffic, parsed it with Wireshark. Mm-hmm. Then he used um, JetX and the APK tools to decompile the X7 app, the Android app itself. Now, right right now, it's a little bit limited, but it's only limited to what he needed to work. And that's effectively um, just muting and being able to adjust the volume. If you're thinking about installing it, it's a pip install. Runs, you know, just from the command line. There's no nice, pretty GUI. So that might be a deal breaker for some people, but... This, this is just a fascinating read. I love seeing stuff like this when somebody sits down and goes, hey, we're, we're going to make yeah. this work. It, it just makes me happy. And again, again, 10, 15 years from now mm-hmm. when, you know, I'm so, you know, because Microsoft's like Windows 10 is the last version of Windows. Here's Windows 11, by the way. When it's at a Windows 19 and Sound Blaster is like, yeah, it's a legacy product. We don't support that anymore. It's still going to work into Linux. Yeah, Absolutely. I was actually really excited about this because I have the Sound Blaster X7 on my eBay watch list. I've had it there for a while and they go for 
for bank <laughs> on eBay. I mean, starting at $300 for one that's not complete, all the way up to $1,000. So they're a real collector's item. And it is actually a really high-powered, high-efficiency Class D digital amplifier that delivers up to 100 watts of power. And it's received a lot of awards, including several CES 2015 Innovation Awards. So oh my this is God, a really Jill, this sought after. Hideous. I want one. Uh, yeah, and it's a triangle. I think it's really cool looking. And they have have it comes in black or white. I want the white one. <laughs> and I, you know, I've I've had this on my list because I actually use external DACs on my computer, listen to music and play games over a 5.1 sound system. So I would really <laughs> like one of these, and now I can I I have a good reason to get one because someone has made it work on Linux. <laughs> So, yay. <laughs> that is truly so, hideous. Really cool. I love it. Uh, <laughs> it's a triangle. I understand why it probably didn't set yeah. well, because what can you put on top of a triangle on your desk? Nothing yeah. is the correct yeah. answer to that. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you Great can read. install De Endeavor OS, which has a triangle logo, and use that right. with Endeavor. <laughs> maybe get some like old Roku's, maybe stack it together. I mean, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm violently against <laughs> any manufacturer that doesn't conform to being a square. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it so you can't set anything on top right, of it. Exactly. You're like, oh, so, and, and that's, I've heard that logic. Like, yeah, we designed it that way to make sure it's at the top of all of your stuff. <laughs> oh. It, it never gets involved. Well, they were in trying to stuff. make it. Yeah. Well, they were trying to make it pretty for desktop use, really. Well, you, you know? got to think about so it. This is it, before it, next the days of uh, enhancing sonic <laughs> fidelity with RGBs. So they had to make it stand down. You know, the triangle yeah. really adds to the upper <laughs> lower mids. Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> it, it looks like an interesting piece of kit. So I'm glad it works on Linux. So if you got one, maybe yeah. you've had one in the closet. You're like, oh, that doesn't work because I know I got a stack of equipment. I'm like, hmm. That's ever going to work into Linux, which I've had that wonderful experience of, you know, just maybe reading Hacker News or a project that I was following. I get up and like, hey, we have working drivers for this now. It's fun time to go play with something. So there you go. If you want to come play with us, you can do that by becoming mm -hmm. a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance this show, air quotes around it. It's just us cutting off. That's what we do. But we actually do like, you know, a bunch of stuff on top of this. We got Linux Gamecast Weekly, the longest running Linux gaming podcast for over a decade. We've been doing that. We'll be doing ah. that Saturday night. We got game streams during the week. We got our Trek Mania series that we're running on Tuesdays and Fridays right now. I try to do a lot of stuff with the back end with audio, video production, tutorials, and guides on Linux because I want to get the next generation up and armed and I want to get people who are curious about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Basically, I want to have a nice little stash of when I see you can't do X, Y, Z on Linux. I'm like, yeah, you can here. You know, I, 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 I don't, there's no point in saying, yeah, you can, unless I can go, yeah, you can. I've made a guide for you. Enjoy. Cause nice. then you can sort out the people like, but I was just saying that to say it. Cause I thought it was cool. I'm like, that's cool, man. Just don't, 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 don't add to the FUD around <laughs> Linux. Um, that's got awesome. We get access to our discord. You can do that. If you're also a Twitch subscriber, we throw in a, bunch of extra stuff probably more than we should yeah. uh, starting at four quarters yeah. a week yeah we got the pre post show mm -hmm. all that and if you want to get everything a little bit early especially with things like uh, the interfacing linux series speaking of audio i always put those out about a week early because it's a super sneaky way from like is there any typos at any of this did i mess anything up and everyone can provide mm -hmm. the feedback it's a fun time joe we yeah, got some people we probably want to thank this week yeah, um, we've got Hardstyle123 who just followed us, and Nubbin did a resub. Thank you, Nubbin. Woohoo, we love you. <laughs> I want to throw down to all of our patrons. Uh, Mir threw a 30 month resub on Twitch. Um, oh, on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday. Yeah. Foxy <laughs> bought a copy of Fall Guys for Jordan. Oil of Hope picked up Gloomhaven, I think might have been for Jordan, and David and Zeno increased their Patreon mm -hmm. pledge. David and Zeno. Yeah. So. That mm -hmm. is kind of brilliant. Stick around for your name in the credits because we will tell you about that. We got Amazon wish list for both of us. If you want to buy us something super sweet, uh, it, that's cool. But we get a little thing where you can uh, send in a note and we'll read it on the show. It's a truck.
try to keep that. What do you say? PG 13? PG 13 ish. (laughs) We don't want to go for like the hard R or the even worse NC 17. On Saturday, have fun though. (laughs) We'll pretty much. Yeah. As long as it doesn't. Well, on this show, when you. Yeah. Well, on this show, when you get it. When you get something from our, our wish zone or our wish list on Amazon, we will read your note on the air. But it's got to be clean for LWW. <laughs> Have you ever seen an individually in. wrapped banana? That I, I've seen that before. Like uh, individually wrapped pieces <laughs> of fruit. Or, you know, things that are just silly. I, I've seen bananas wrapped in plastic. I'm like, really? You're doing yeah. that? Or, or an apple? Or yeah, an saran wrap. Like a single use, you can buy it at no, fresh. buy it at a store like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you can. They're wrapped up. A lot of the uh, actually, the, a lot of Asian stores have their food wrapped up. <laughs> I see this at uh, like you just Whole buy it Foods that way. sometimes, but more yeah. often like Kroger's and stuff. I'm like why? Why do you need to involve packaging in a banana? <laughs> I yeah. don't understand. But hey, not to be left <laughs> out, we're going to include packaging in a slice of pie. Yeah, pecan pl- pie. Actually, pecan Individual, pie is quite good. It's like, how much plastic can we waste for some junk food? Oh, hold my sake. There it is. Yeah. What do we I, get? <laughs> I, I know you were was distracted by the pie. And it was, yeah. <laughs> I wish that container was not plastic and it was biodegradable. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really cool. Uh, there is a big update to the Raspberry Pi Zero, <laughs> Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye uh, that is focused on greater security. And for instance, in the latest release, the default Pi user is actually being removed. And instead, you will have to create a user the first time you boot a newly flashed Raspberry Pi OS image like you do with other Linux distros. So this just just totally makes sense for security reasons. And the Raspberry Pi setup wizard, which runs on the first boot and lets you configure international settings, connecting to wireless LAN, install software updates, and change the default password is no longer optional. So you have to run through the setup wizard, and this is how a user account now is created. And until you create a user account, you cannot log into the desktop. So this is actually a really major major change, but I think is, is really wonderful for security. And for people who run their Raspberry Pi headless and cannot work through the wizard, the Raspberry Pi imager tool allows you to pre-configure an image with a user account. So lots of lots of good things coming to this Raspberry Pi update for sure. And I know Ven found some other goodies to talk about. Here's the thing, man. I can defeat this in your security. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not going to create a user. Uh-oh. What are you going to do now, huh? Hmm? That's what I thought. No user. Ah, uh-huh. That's a joke, kids. <laughs> if I have to explain it to yeah. you, it won't be as funny. Now, check this out. Um, this is because some countries have introduced uh, legislation to forbid any internet-connected device from having a default login credentials, Mm -hmm. which is good. IOT, Mm -hmm. welcome to the modern botnet. That's basically what we're dealing with. Now, users, basically, as Jill said, you're going to create a default user when you install the OS. I'm down with that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because some software is going to still expect the default Pi login. So you're still probably going to you're going to make that Pi eventually at some point for the foreseeable future. So you want to go ahead and do that. Now, if you are using the Pi OS light image, it doesn't have that wizard. It doesn't have the GUI. I'm looking at this. I'm like, you can, you can Mm -hmm. plug a monitor into a Raspberry Pi, which I, yeah, I'm kind of joking, but I just don't consider like the Pi back here in the rack, which is running the street. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I never think to (laughs) plug video into a Raspberry Pi, but It'll give you a nice little command line setup to do everything where you, you can currently like manage most of the stuff from the CLI. Uh, it's pretty neat. Text prompt, command line, headless, and you can do it through the Raspberry Imager, which is another thing, which is, I'm really glad they updated that Imager because That's I had that very nice. long, drawn out, <laughs> overcomplicated way of um, setting up your Wi-Fi login cred- credentials on a Pi, just rebaked into an image. 
now you can just do it through the image. You're like, Hey, here's all my network stuff. And it just works out of the box. Super excited that it's there. Now, this is something I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this. Yeah. And I, I knew that there was Bluetooth in yes. the Raspberry. I'm like, Hey, yeah, look, Oh, it's an adapter. How do I kill that? Oh, okay. That's how I cut that off. That was my experience. <laughs> yeah. With I it. usually turn but, it off too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you couldn't pair a Bluetooth device initially, unless you had a US, uh, USB Bluetooth dongle. It had that set up in order to do that initial pairing. This is no mm-hmm. longer the case. You can now just do it out of the box. So you don't have to worry about, you know, mice, keyboard, you know, hit devices. And yeah. Saving the best for last because Wayland's back, baby. Yes. Woohoo. It is. It's there. <laughs> Kinda. You can use Wayland they, experimental <laughs> on I'm the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, they're rolling on like, hey, it's yeah. there. And you got to appreciate the Raspberry Pi Foundation because they're straight up daring you to use it. Like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. See what happens. Bring it. Absolutely. And, um, it's not going to be a full Whalen mm-hmm. experience just yet, but it's something to play with. Again, I would never think yeah. to do this because, uh, you know, have I? I think once I bought the mm-hmm. Pi 4 8 gig when those existed. And uh, yeah, I think I, oh, I did because I bought that fancy case for it and it had like the... Uh, HDMI breakout, you know, where it put all the log, all the connectors on one side logically, and I plugged HDMI oh, yeah. in to watch it boot. I'm like, ah, look at that click, and never use it again. But yeah, there you go. That's an <laughs> update that I'm not going to get anywhere near for the foreseeable future. But it is yeah. there if you want to go play with it. It's easy enough to upgrade. Absolutely. You know, to upgrade your Pi and default Pi users, RIP. That's uh, yeah, goodbye <laughs> yes. Pi. Yeah. Uh- I'm really, really happy though about also about the Bluetooth uh, keyboard and mice integration now, uh, because then you don't have to have a separate keyboard and mouse, um, whether it be wired or USB wireless, and then hook that, you know, connect it to your Bluetooth. So, because so many people now have Bluetooth uh, keyboards and mice because of their mobile devices. So that kind of makes sense. It's a really nice feature to have. Not me. I'm a rebel, Jill. Mine uses 2.4 gigahertz <laughs> and interferes with Wi-Fi signals. Um, but, uh, yes. <laughs> but you can use it from across the house because that's a feature I've... <laughs> I only know this because I took this thing across my house to go clean it. And I came back and my desktop was up to all kinds of things. Uh-oh. Where I had been Did you, pushing on buttons, cleaning it, bunnies? right-clicking. No, no. I had a bunch of windows no? open and stuff from cleaning the mouse because it was communicating just fine to the running system in here and i'm glad i didn't send anybody a weird email that i will take okay i see (laughs) it was (laughs) self-activated it was still going i assumed it would be out of range nay it was not it was not so yeah (laughs) there's the pie thing you know i still use uh pie i think yeah no i absolutely still have pie set as the default user on this one but it's not uh it is okay hmm it is web facing it's got a password on it uh don't don't mm-hmm. come at me bro i mean it's, it's sitting behind a firewall but uh, yeah that's not a challenge <laughs> all right um we're gonna get out of here if you want to get in contact with us leave us a comment on youtube or uh head over to linuxgamecast.com we got a contact button and if you say something real nice and spicy or something worth reading we might read it on Mm -hmm. the show okay everyone we survived this let's get out of here we survived (laughs) let's thank all our beautiful patrons (laughs) see if i can do it uh read the patron credits fast enough probably can't (laughs) but i will try (laughs) advisors omegas (laughs) artharen Yay! And our executive producers, Aldius, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic Ass, Mike Too late. G. Minus one point. Aww. Dark Wave yeah. Extraction. See, I got that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sea Monsters, Renald, Ryder X Machina, Treadgills, Vera Tenuta, Justin. See, I can't write them. It's <laughs> She's vegan. The, our credits hey, are going man. by too quickly. Two? But you will see them on video on YouTube. There's a gang of Twitch. Germans. Just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. We love you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you. We'll see you mm-hmm. next week. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> I don't know. Jill 
<laughs> Joe wants to get you with her crab, uh, crab claws. <laughs> yeah, he thinks I'm looking through a, a monocular or something. A monocular, 